Welcome back to the Tomarosa. We are going for a trip today. We are. We're getting away from the farm for just a couple days. And we're going to visit another farm because that's what farmers do when they go on vacation. Many of you may be familiar with Carnation Milk. And there is actually a real Carnation farm uh, east of Seattle. And we are going to stop by and visit them. Incidentally, we also need some more hay. And guess who sells organic hay? So we are getting some more hay. It is a beautiful, glorious day in early March. I, th I think if we would have been a little bit more judicious with how we fed out, we probably could have made it to spring, but I like giving the cows food, so here we are going to get more food for the cows. So the, the hay that is behind me is alfalfa hay, which we're trying to use up. Their cows are going in their dry period now, so we want to get rid of this and switch them over to grass hay. Uh, for a majority of their dry period, so that's what we're going to be picking up. Um, otherwise, uh, a few things that uh, we're going to change management-wise this year is I think we might fill the barn up like we did, but also do a couple outside haystacks like we used to do before we had the barn to feed in, uh, in the fall early. Feed those out first when we're still kind of pasturing but there's not really good quality forage out there we can supplement with the, uh, the the hay that we put up in the outside stacks and that'll also keep the cows outside of the barn a little bit longer as well before winter this uh, this last summer was the first time we harvested from our alfalfa field it was the second year since planting uh, around here it just usually takes about two years for stuff to get going so uh, we expect a good crop on our third year and then also for future purposes uh, we have a couple more fields uh, that we're going to turn into legume fields. One will be alfalfa and the other one will be sandfoin. So we'll be planting those this spring. Okay mamas, okay babies, we'll be back. We got, we got good hands taking care of you while we're gone. How does it feel to be driving back to Seattle, Stacy? It, uh, it feels pretty weird, actually. The last time uh, we made this drive was for my retirement in December of 2019. So it's been over a year. It's all coming back, though. Like, every, every turn. I drove it so many times. Carnation Farms. Since we're going to be in Seattle for a day, the folks at Carnation were nice enough to say we could park our trailer there. So that's what we're going to do. These are pretty sweet digs that Carnation is letting us park our trailer. We didn't expect it to be undercover behind a locked gate. That is super nice. And there is the hay we're going to pick up on Thursday. Stacy's my hat, my new hat. Yes, yeah, Stacy uh, got himself a fancy new hat today. Farm swag. <laughs> All right. Hitch is off, chains are off, electric is disconnected. Here we are back at Carnation Farms after a day off in Seattle. We are here to pick up our hay, and I just wanted to share a little bit of my connection with Carnation Farms and why it's important to me. As many of you who have followed our channel know, uh, my family were milk haulers, and they hauled milk for the Carnation Company out of both Spokane and Sunnyside, Washington. The Carnation Company had uh, fresh fluid milk and ice cream plants at both locations. So for me growing up, you know, riding on the milk trucks with my dad, I really grew up like in the Carnation milk plant, Aaron spoke in, running all over the place. 
Carnation was just a huge presence in my life growing up. Just to give you a brief history of the Carnation Company, it was originally founded in 1899 as the Pacific Coast Condensed Milk Company in Kent, Washington, but they didn't actually have a farm yet. Eldbridge Stewart, the founder, recognized early that there needed to be improvement to the local dairy herds. And so in 1910, he bought land east of Seattle and formed what would become Carnation Farms. And the purpose of the Carnation Farms was to uh, breed better dairy cows and bulls for local farmers to improve their herds with. While the Carnation's breeding program was initially for local dairy farmers, uh, it became so good that it became world-renowned and Carnation genetics were used around the world. The Carnation Farm continued their breeding program for many, many years. In 1985, the Nestle's company acquired Carnation and part of that acquisition was the farm itself. A funny story, it was such a huge acquisition that Nestle's didn't even realize that they got the farm as part of the package. It was a couple years before they realized it. Uh, the herd itself was not dispersed until 2004, and that sadly ended uh, the dairy history on Carnation Farm. In 2008, uh, Carnation Farms was bought by the Paul Newman Foundation to use as a camp. That continued for a few years, and then in 2016, the Stewart family bought back the farm. They reacquired Carnation Farm. And under their guidance, Carnation Farms has become what it is today. This wasn't our first visit to Carnation Farms, however. In 2010, we were invited by Everett Stewart III, who is the great-grandson of the founder. And he gave us a great tour of the farm and the facilities, including a small museum. Okay, so what is going on with Carnation Farms now? So today at Carnation Farms, we are farming vegetables. We grow vegetables on about 15 acres. Then we also have a rigorous livestock program where we are raising broilers. We have 1,400 broilers scheduled for this year to put out on pasture. We've got lambs, rabbit processing. We are also raising some cows for another farm. And we grow a lot of hay right behind you. <laughs> Which is very beneficial for us. <laughs> and why we're here. Yeah, so uh, the farm is really on, we're doing all kinds of things. We have a forestry program. We do a lot to just steward the land. This historic farm is just super important for the valley. And so everything that we're doing, we just have this like historical lens, but also how we're bringing it into the future. And so vegetables and growing our community is really a way to have a full service farm of having proteins and vegetables available at the farm stand and through our CSA. We're all loaded up. We did a good job tarping everything, so that means we should not see any rain at all on the way home. And then, uh, otherwise, yeah, nothing to do but do it. driving through the little town of Carnation. It was historically called Tolt, T-O-L-T, and then they changed their name to Carnation. We made it back onto the farm. We just went ahead and rolled the trailer into the barn. And then we used our tractor with the forks just to unload this one bale. The cows were happy to see us. It's always fun to take a trip, but it sure is nice to come home. That is so true. We enjoyed our trip over to the coast and seeing Carnation Farms, but coming down our driveway was very, very nice. And seeing the cows again. We <laughs> miss the cows. So that's it for this one, and uh, stay tuned, leave us comments, and we will see you next time on the Tomarosa.